we see a very unique prayer take place in John chapter 17. We see Jesus, while he was still, still on the earth in the flesh, praying for us today in 2024. And how do we know that? We see Jesus make a prayer to God the Father on the behalf of the believer. And let's just take a look here at this prayer that he has given to us in John chapter 17. When Jesus opens in this prayer in John 17, we're not going to read the entire chapter, but he speaks about himself. He goes to God the Father concerning himself, and he goes to God the Father concerning his disciples and also the believer, the believers then and the believers today. And so we get to see some really amazing parts of Jesus' heart when he goes to pray here in John chapter 17. Before we begin reading in verse 10, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever prayed for someone else? And then ask yourself, how fervently did you pray? With how much compassion did you pray for that person? With how much sincerity did you go to God the Father for that other person? You see, it's really easy to go to God the Father for our own needs. But when it comes to the needs of other people, how much do we pray about those things? And how sincere are we? How much care and concern do we put into those things? Well, Jesus exceeds any compassion that we have ever had uh, for other people. He exceeds that. The love, the care, the sincerity, Christ exceeds. And he is going to God the Father on your behalf now. So let's just take a look and see what he says. Beginning here in verse 10, he's speaking to God and he says, All mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. He is speaking about his people. Those that are his, he is saying to God, they're yours and they're mine. And what's mine is thine and thine is mine. And I, Jesus, am glorified in these people. Okay, that's what he's saying there in verse 10. Verse 11, and now I am no more in the world. But now Jesus, when he is making this prayer, he is very much still in the flesh. We're going to see that as the scripture plays out. But he is separated from the world. He has been called out. Right? He tells us to do this ourselves, to, you know, to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, but to be called out and to be separated from the world. He also notes in here in this passage that we are also, as believers, no longer of the world. But let's just go on and read. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. So he is saying that to God, he's saying, he's making this request to God, let's keep them as, as we are, right? And um, I believe it's 1 John 4, 17, but this may, it may not be the right verse. I actually didn't write it down for us today. But it says, as he is, so are we in this world. So we did a very lengthy um, series back m many months ago called uh, Spirit, Soul, and Body, where we understood that, that we in this flesh don't have the new body that's like Jesus yet, right? But Jesus told us that we are already like him in this world. And that scripture that I just shared with you where it says, as he is talking about Jesus, so are we in this world. So right now, there is a way that you are like Jesus as a believer. And that is in the spirit. Because that spirit is his spirit. It is one spirit. It is the same spirit. So as he's speaking to God the Father about this, he's saying, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. They're one in us. Okay? 
He's talking about you. If you're a believer, he's talking about you. But he's making this prayer 2,000 years ago. Now, don't you think that God the Father is going to answer the request of his son? This is a prayer that's made about you as a believer today in 2024. Verse 12, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Now, Jesus saying that scripture that might be fulfilled, that's because it was prophetic about him in the Old Testament. But he's saying that he has kept all of them from evil except for this son of perdition that's speaking about. He's speaking about his disciples and that there was one that was lost and that, that he calls him the son of perdition, that is Judas Iscariot. Okay. Verse 13, and now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Oh my goodness. Jesus is speaking these words at the time he was in the flesh, so that you today in 2024, so he's making this request, he's speaking these words, those, those words hold power. Jesus is speaking this prayer to God the Father for every believer. And he says that the that my joy is fulfilled in them. So you're thinking, hopefully, to yourself now that Christ's joy could be fulfilled in me now. He prayed and asked the Father for that. Yes, he did. Verse 14, I have given them thy word. And the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. So what is Jesus saying? He's saying, Father, I'm asking you to keep them from evil. But I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, because in the world is evil, right? In this present world that we live in, is there is still evil here. Jesus says, now, as soon as they become a believer, I'm not asking you to take them out and remove them. What is he asking for? Let's, let's read on. Verse 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. You're going to be sanctified through the words of God. And it says, thy word is truth. Okay? So, when in Scripture, there's another verse that says, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So, you are given the Holy Spirit, but it also says that you worship through the word as well. The words, the eternal words of God. Verse 18, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. That is a powerful, powerful verse here in verse 18. What did Jesus say? Jesus says, God, my Father, you have sent me into this world. Now, why did Jesus come? He came for a purpose. It was to seek and to save that which was lost. Because he was God already. He didn't need to do he didn't need to come in the flesh and do all that he did to prove that he was God. He came because he was God, and we needed that. He desired and loved for us to be reconnected to the Father. And the only way that that could be done, because sin had entered into the world, man had fallen, was that Jesus come and he lived out the perfect law, right? He fulfilled all the law. He lived a perfect, blameless life. And then he passed that victory, that torch of victory, basically, that he received, that prize he received, and he gave it over to us. That the price of what he paid, he paid it for us. <coughs> Excuse me, because Jesus didn't need it. He didn't need to be sanctified through the word, right? He did this for us. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. So Jesus is saying, God, when they become a believer, don't spare them out of the world yet. Leave them here that they may reach others. That's what he's saying. That they may seek and save through my power, through my word, through my truth, that others may be saved through that truth. God, you've sent me for a purpose. 
Now I send them in my place. That's what's happened. That is the magnitude of what is being spoken here in this prayer that Jesus made 2,000 years ago. Verse 19, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might, might be sanctified through the truth. Jesus says, I've already, I am clean and I am sanctified and I am holy and I'm going to make them holy. I'm doing it for them. Okay, verse 20, neither pray I, I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their words. So he, Jesus is saying, I'm not speaking only about the believers right now when he's praying the prayer 2,000 years ago. He is speaking about all of those which shall believe, right? That The ones that had not believed yet. That is you and I. You were present on the earth when Jesus was here 2,000 years ago. <clears throat> But if you are a believer now, he prayed this prayer for you. Verse 21, that they may all be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us and the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Here is the reason why. Jesus said, <clears throat> now we are going to sanctify them and Father, lead them right, and make them as we are, they're going to be as we are, as he is, so are we in this world, and again, it's by the Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit that indwelling that comes into the hearts of the believers, right, but what's the purpose, look what he said there, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, so God the Father glorifies the Son when, when the Holy Spirit descends upon him. And, and God the Father says that, you know, thou art my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And Jesus receives the power of the Holy Spirit and then, then he goes out with this power, right? And then he's doing all these miracles because that's when it started. That's when all of his miracles and all of this, and it drew the people to him. Right, once he received that power. Jesus is saying that he's going to give you that same power. And he's requesting it of God the Father to give it to you. And you have that indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Every believer shall receive this. The indwelling power of the Holy Spirit that you may go out and reach others in his place with that power. And the reason that you have it is so that, so that the world may know that God sent his son, Jesus. You go out and represent him as a believer. That was the end of verse 21, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one, even as we are one. Again, that is the glory uh, that is given to you in the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 23, I and them and thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me. There he says it again. The reason that this glory has been passed over to you as a believer now. And that you're not just become a believer and then you ascend into heaven. Right? You are here still in this world being protected from evil. Right? Because you are heading to one destination as a believer. And you also have power while you are here present in the earth as a believer. You have power to cast out devils. You can tell Satan to go and he must flee. There's so many scriptures we could go over about that. That Holy Spirit power and being protected from evil. Think about this. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them and, ha and thou as thou hast loved me. So the the same love that Jesus felt from God the Father while he was present in the flesh on the earth was through the power of the Holy Spirit. And it is the power that is given to you and that you can experience the love of God the Father, his son, Jesus, because of the Holy Spirit that has been given to the believers. 
Now, we've done some lengthy teachings on that indwelling of the Holy Spirit in the past, right? In our, in, on, on our um, channel, we've done a lot. I've shared a lot of those with you all. Today, it's not about proving about that indwelling of the Holy Spirit. I've shared many scriptures, and I'm sure in the, in the future I'll share many of those as well. Today, it is for us to see that Jesus Christ, while he was on the earth, spoke words of power. It was a prayer to God the Father for you today as a believer in 2024, because it was for those which shall believe, according to verse 20. And Jesus is saying that the glory that I have, that you, have, the Father, have given to me, I pass that glory on to them so that the world may know that you sent me and that I and the Father are one and we make them one with us in spirit. That is a powerful thing. <laughs> you know, so many times in our life, there are tools and resources available to us that we can overlook and not know about for our entire life or for a very long time. And we can be living our life without some type of an awesome resource just because we just didn't know about it. Scripture teaches us, and God says it in the Old Testament, he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So he's saying that his people, God is saying his people, his believers, right? His family are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You see, y'all, if you are a believer and true follower of Jesus, you have his glory, his power that has been given to you so that he may be glorified by you reaching the lost for him. The scripture teaches us that in his name, Jesus' name, we can cast out devils from people, right? People that can be demonically oppressed or possessed. We have that power. It's, it's his power, but we have it. We have access to it. It is present here with us in the Holy Spirit. We have power to cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. All of these things that Jesus spoke. He says he bore our sicknesses at the cross. We don't just have the forgiveness of sins and an eternal home in heaven. We as believers now are ambassadors in his steed. We are now the ones that go out to reach the lost. He has given us that commission. In Matthew chapter 28, it is in many places in scripture, but I often refer to Matthew chapter 28 in, in verses uh, 19 and 20, I believe it says, go, Jesus said, go, go ye, you, as believers, as followers of Jesus, into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. That's another verse. Jesus, he tells us that we need to go in his place, and he's making this prayer to God the Father. He's saying to him, Father, there, look at verse 24. I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, verse 25, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. Verse 26, and I have declared unto them thy name, and, and will declare it that thou that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. It doesn't get more plain. And it is for the purpose, again, as just as verse 23 says, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me. What is your purpose? It is that the world may know that Jesus is the Son of God, the Lamb of God, that taketh away the sin of the world. What is your purpose, believer? Is that the world may know that Jesus is the Son of God. 
you represent him. And you don't represent him without him. He has stayed here with you in spirit. He has sent his spirit. Remember, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are all three one being. And the Holy Spirit is God. It's just as much God as Jesus was God. Just as much God as God is God. And it's been left for you. And I. And every believer. And every believer in between. This power. But if you don't know what you have. <laughs> how will you know. How to use it. How will you know the intent of it. Or what it's used for. Did you ever see that movie. The Little Mermaid. It's a Disney movie. I I love Disney movies. Uh, there's a lot of uh, movies uh, that are more like animated that I really like. I kind of navigate towards animated movies uh, sometimes more than and other types of movies. But if you've ever seen Little Mermaid and um, she ends up going and um, and she discovers this ship. And she finds it's a wrecked ship and it's down on the, the bottom of the sea. And she finds these things. She finds a mirror. She finds um, a fork. She finds these pots and different things that are in the shipwreck. And the mermaid doesn't know what they're for because they're for human life on, you know, on land. And she lives in the sea and has always lived in the sea at this time. And... And she picks up this fork and she starts combing her hair with it because she doesn't know what it's for. She takes a fork and combs her hair. Remember that? Did you see that movie? You see, she didn't know what that tool was for, you, that utensil was for, what it was used for. And friends, if you don't know what that power of the Holy Spirit is for. Let it be today that you understand it fully. You are given power that is exceeding, exceedingly great because it's God's power to reach the lost. And he says, in my name, you, as a believer, can cast out devils and all of, so many things that scripture tells us that we can do with the power of the Holy Spirit. But how will you know what to do if, if that fork becomes a hairbrush instead of an eating utensil? <laughs> we need to know how to use it, and we need to know what it's for, that power, that glory that he said that, he, that God the Father gave to him, that he has given to us. We need to know it, recognize it, and use it for the intent that it is for, for reaching the lost people. Well, God bless y'all. Thank you all so much for joining today as Jesus prays for us that we will go out and do the same, seek and to save that which was lost. And we don't go out powerless. We go with his power. God bless y'all. Mm -hmm.